Hi, my name is Roman Nahaniki. Welcome to the Linton Custom Objects Crash Course video series. We're going to teach you everything that you need to know about custom objects and more. We have some of our best and brightest minds uh, in the custom objects HubSpot ecosystem world uh, on the call. Joining us, we have uh, Kyle Jepson from HubSpot, and we also have Daniel Linton from Linton. Thank you all for joining us and, and thank you for being willing to share your HubSpot custom objects expertise. We'll, we'll jump into it and we'll, we'll just kind of start with the, the most common, most burning question that people have. And Kyle, I'll, I'll uh, ask you to kind of talk to this. How do I know if I need a custom object? Everybody's excited about custom objects. Everybody wants to, to use them, but how do you know if you really need a custom object in your HubSpot portal. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, step number one, if you have been going along happily in HubSpot and have not ever thought to yourself, hmm, maybe I need a custom object, you probably don't need a custom object. <laughs> don't, don't get it too excited, all your friends, like don't, don't get that FOMO feeling. Like <laughs> if HubSpot is working for you, just let HubSpot work for you. They don't need to introduce any complexity here. Um, but uh, if you think, if you suspect, maybe I do need a custom object, um, there's kind of like, kind of like five basic questions I recommend everyone go through to, to check, do I really need a custom object? And the first one is uh, for this piece of data, whatever it is you're wanting to record and track, uh, what is your source of truth? Is it is HubSpot the right source of truth for that, right? Uh, there, there are lots of other systems you might have, like like an accounting software, for instance. And and for for accounting information, you should probably just store that in your accounting software. We have a lot of great integrations with accounting tools and other tools that that can help the keep the data in sync. Um, but but if for for some of that uh, back office sort of sort of. Uh, company data, you're, you're going to want to keep that somewhere other than HubSpot and then just sync the relevant pieces of it into it. But if HubSpot is the source of truth for this, then the second question is, does this data, the, the way it's represented, does it need to be dynamic or immutable? Meaning, does it need to be able to change over time or do you need like a, a record that's written in stone, right? And, and, and an easy example of this is the difference between a, a phone number and a phone call. If you're record recording phone calls, you want the date that it happened, the length, the outcome, you want all that to be immutable, to be exactly unchanging uh, so that every time you go to look at it, you know it's accurate. Whereas a phone number, you want to be able to overwrite that, change it, add new ones over time to match the current state. And, and custom objects are much more in that dynamic category. If you're looking for immutable records, uh, it, you're, you're going to want to do something probably on the timeline with, with, with events. Um, and, and there are API solutions and integrations for that also. But if you need a dynamic record inside of HubSpot, um, really the key piece to understanding if you need a custom object versus some other thing is, is how it's going to relate to other bits of information in your CRM. Um, and, and, and the main differentiation I would point to is, is it uh, in a one-to-one -one relationship or, or one-to-many, right? Because if you think of like properties on a contact record, uh, uh, like a phone number again, right? That phone number applies only to that contact or their name or their email or, or their date of birth or their favorite flavor of cake or whatever you store your CRM only applies to them, right? And, so, and that's great. That's what properties are for. Uh, where a custom object starts to be really great is, uh, is if you need something that you can associate to more than one record or more than one type of record, right? So if you think of like a deal, for instance, which is a standard object, uh, that can be associated to a contact uh, or to multiple contacts and to a company, right? And this is the sort of thing that you can only do with an object. It would be very hard to capture that using, using properties or, or, or a, another, another place. Uh, a, an object can be associated to, to multiple other objects in a one-to-many relationship. Um, that's kind of the heart of it. There are a couple other things to consider too, like whether this is internal or external data, right? Is this primarily something you want on your website or is it primarily something you just need for your own private records? Um, if, if, if it's website, uh, you may want to consider using some website tools like, like HubDB or, or uh, Design Manager rather than, than a custom object. Though there are cool things you can do with custom objects and, and the, our CMS to, to publish those things to the, the web. And then also like, just when it comes to defining that custom object, make sure it's not like, a subcategory of a thing, right? Like uh, a lot of people keep wanting custom objects that are essentially a different kind of contact or a different kind of company or a different kind of deal. And, uh, and I would really uh, caution you against, against going down that road because our standard objects, uh, you know, contacts, companies, deals, tickets, these are built to do a specific job and they have 
their own superpowers, right? That, that you're not going to be able to replicate very well. The, the easiest example to point to is, is with company records inside HubSpot CRM, you add a company, you include the domain, we're going to search publicly available records and, and enrich your data, right? With, with company information like its location and, and its contact information and its founding date and, and whatever is publicly available about that company. And if you build a, a custom object that is essentially a company record, but a different kind of company, right? Like, like, like a, a, an investor or like an organization or something, you're not going to get that magic anymore. Um, and so it would be better if it's, if it's a different sort of company kind of thing to maybe tease that out using, using a drop-down property um, this is a different type of company, right? Um, but, uh, but all in all, th those, those kind of five layers of things, if you want HubSpot to be your source of truth and you need a dynamic record of, of data and it's gonna be connected to multiple other pieces of data, other records and things, and it's primarily for internal use and it's not a subcategory of something else, then by all means, build a, build a, build a custom object and I think it'll serve you really well. That's a great point, and I, and I like your uh, comment about, you know, could this be a property on a standard object? Because I think if people think about it that way, uh, it helps them really kind of vet, is this really a property or is it a real separate object, like you said, that's connected to everything? So I, I think that's, that's important because I think people may want to automatically say, well, this needs to be its own thing and it may it may not need to be and you have to kind of really think through that you now you mentioned some examples of some use cases of, of custom objects and in daniel i know you've had a lot of experience in in building out some of these custom objects can you speak to some good use cases of you know kyle gave us the the requirements can you operationalize that and give us some real examples sure some of the most popular custom objects that we create for our customers, uh, partner distributor. Uh, a partner object can be really helpful when you're selling deals and you need to associate that deal with the partner and with the end user or the customer. So in that example, you can have the company as the customer and a partner associated with the deal. You could also have partners associated with companies where each company has an assigned uh, preferred partner. So that's a, a pretty popular uh, custom object. Contract or order is another one, um, typically associated with a deal. Licenses for software licensing. Uh, shipment, purchase order. Locations. Locations are pretty popular to tie to the um, company record when a company has multiple addresses or locations, and especially if you have sales reps um, with different territories selling to companies in, in those different locations. Uh, marketing conversion. Uh, some customers like to create marketing conversion records in their workflows for very granular uh, marketing uh, ROI tracking. Family or household can be used to group multiple contacts together uh, into under a, a family umbrella, really popular with uh, insurance use cases, for example. Project. Uh, some customers are, are using HubSpot as a lightweight project tracker. So projects and tasks and deliverables, tracking all of that within HubSpot. Uh, so those are some of the more popular custom objects that we've seen come across. Great. Is there any, is there any one custom object that you see more frequently out of the ones that you mentioned, Daniel, would you say? Um, some of these are more popular than others. Personally, I see partner come up more, more often than not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, good, thank you. Uh, Kyle, you talked about uh, custom objects versus custom properties. Can you provide a little bit more context? How do you, when do you use a custom object versus a custom property and how do you think through that? Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, I mean, the, the one to one versus one to many thing is, is kind of the, my go to most basic thing there. If you need to associate this to more than one object, it's, it's going to have to be an object, right? Um, there's no way to create a single property that can be somehow connected to multiple. I guess you could have a workflow stamp it, but but kind of the other thing is is think about um, what's going to be cleanest and and tidiest for for your data. I, Daniel mentioned uh, locations uh, as as a, a custom object, and if you think about um, a, a company record, right? A company record is going to have properties for for its its 
location, right? You're going to have like a street address and a, a city and a state and maybe a country and, and, and some sort of postal code. And that's, that's several properties all kind of capturing the same thing, but it makes sense for them to be separate and, and kind of there. But once a, once a company has more than one location, or if you want to like track the billing information for the company there, but it can have multiple shipping locations, for instance, this might happen in a, uh, on the contact record too, right? Like you have one way of billing your customers, but they can have several different addresses you ship to. Now, now it's kind of, you might want to think about having a, a, a custom object that has those same properties in it, but now you can have more than one associated to the, to the contact or company record, right? Because if, if you were going to capture this in properties, well, how would you do it? You would have to have uh, street address one, uh, city one, uh, country one, postal code one, uh, street address two, <laughs> country code two, three, and, 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 and there would be a limit, right? And once you have a company, if you've done three of those, you're starting to have a huge sprawl of, of properties you've got to keep straight. And if your wires get crossed, you know, oh dear. <laughs> but uh, like, if you have three of those, and oh, now now we have a customer who has four locations. Guess we better add uh, location four, you know, street four, uh, city four to all of our. Like, it, it just gets messy and really hard to maintain, right? Whereas if you have a custom object, suddenly there's not a, a real limit. Like, you, a, a company can absolutely just have one location and not have all uh, lo location two, location three, location four just sitting empty. Um, but if you need to add a location, four, five, six, seven, it, you just you know create another object and associate it there. So I think it's really important when you're thinking about creating a, a, a custom object to pause at, at this, should it be a property or maybe a collection of properties, maybe it, it'll take a few to capture it versus an object and, and just think long-term, like what if someone needs a bunch of these or what if uh, someone only needs one, right? How, how will that, affect your database's cleanliness and your ability to maintain it and find things? How will it affect your ability to scale, right? Um, and, uh, and decide. In some cases, you know, you may say, we want one billing address per customer. So we are not going to make billing address a custom object. We're going to make it properties because we want to hold ourselves to having one and exactly one for billing address for every customer. But shipping address, like there's no business advantage to limiting people to only having one shipping address, right? We wanna give our customers the flexibility to have things shipped to different locations. Uh, well, now now a, a custom object starts to make a lot of sense. It's a great point and, and great example. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so we're finishing up this first video, uh, this uh, introductory video. We hope this is uh, helpful to you. Uh, please uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we're happy to answer them. Uh, you can contact us at uh, lynchandweb.com or you can contact HubSpot as well. Um, we're gonna be back with uh, video two and we hope that you watch that. It's, a, it's more of an intermediate video and we'll get into some more in-depth questions specifically about the API and um, workflows and those sorts of things. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next video.